Have you ever been hungry? Not that late for supper growl you get on your way to the next meal. No. I mean an in your bones hunger. The kind that nary lets you think of aught else. The two days since and the two days for all you know, two days hence kind. The hunger stirred in the pit of your belly, warm too many days of providing less than what a belly required, less than what a proper soul depends upon to thrive. Have you known that hunger, lads? To understand me, to comprehend how I stand before you all these years hence, breathe in the air upon the wind of County Cark, and all the seeming health that sails with it, you have to know the hunger if you turn a proper soul improper. There were crimes enough. There are judgments we've yet to repay dwelling on this earthly green. And there were crimes enough committed against us that are beyond any earthly judgment I can and at the root of it all, <clears throat> bound up in its sinew and, and vine, forcing all that blackness up through the ground and into God's light, there's one word, one notion, hunger. Perhaps it failed before. I'd heard tell, having tilled a parcel with my father since I were a wee lad in service to the same landlord. I worked me land, but I didn't truly own me land, you see. But twere mine, nonetheless. Me dad, he taught me every stone of the place. I knew that land like you know a woman. Actually, thinking about me, Caitlin, I knew the land a tad better. <laughs> it fed me two girls. It gave me what little I had in my pocket any given time. It provided me any right I had at eight and twenty years of age to be calling myself a man. I asked no more than to, to be doing me work, to have a meal for Caitlin and for the, the girls at the end of the day, and to share a spot with the boys at, Jimmy's pub upon me on Friday. And Lord knows no more was ever visited upon me. Simple wants and simple pleasures. I was married and family, as we all were. We went to church Sunday, as we all did, and said prayers with the same words. I yelled too much, or I, I drank too much on the rare occasion. <laughs> made me penance and moved on fresh to, to pull the crop from the ground again. It wasn't a surprise when the famine came. We'd heard it coming in gossip and whispers. But to actually see those pieces of coal staring out of the ground like the cold black eyes of the old serpent himself. Mm. What's a potato? Not much. A bit to feed his soul. Wasn't there corn enough? Weren't there cattle enough to slaughter? And there were. On ships, leaving the ports of Erin each day to keep England in beef and the rest of the world in corn while those who tended the land. What, what we raised, we sold, see? If you wanted to keep your land and not be turned out by the landlord, you did so. Potatoes alone could be grown enough to eat and sell as well. All the tenable land raised grass to feed the cattle. Only potatoes took hold in the leftovers. Hills and plains of rolling emerald, green, the like of which 
There's none to match in the known world. How food? What we ate and lived upon and fed our children with it was brown. Now it was black. The small farmers fell upon the mercy of the large crop farmers. The big farmers pled their cases to the landlords. The landlords turned to the absent owners far away in England. There was no mercy to be found there. And you can be certain, no mercy trickled down to the poor of Cork. Those who could feed their own locked their hearts to us. The church locked its front gate. Poverty locked its chains upon us. But the ports, they stayed open. Every day, without fail, for five years, sending our food to foreign soil when Ireland's children starved. When my own children starved. When the last of what little we had was gone. And the prospect of replacing it were gone as well. We fell into a routine of survival, Caitlin and myself. 